This feature story is brought to you by Brothers Habet Limited. Every project has to start somewhere, and Brothers Habet's got you covered. We're the place for professionals because we understand success is built on quality and reliability. For the do-it-yourselfers seeking quality tools and materials to bring their out-of-the-box ideas to life. Our paint department offers a kaleidoscope of hues to those looking to express their unique style. And for those seeking the perfect touch of elegance for their homes, we offer a curated collection of household fixtures and furnishings that caters to every taste. But what sets Brothers Habet apart is our exceptional customer service. Our employees go above and beyond to ensure that every customer's needs are met. We're here to see you through your building journey. Visit Brothers Habet and get started today. Or call or WhatsApp us for a quote. See you soon. So for me, it really started uh, about 20, 25 years ago, and, and I had this conversion experience, and it, it really brought me into the Catholic Church over time originally. And, and it was through that that I came to know Salt and came to uh, meet many of the priests and sisters and many lay people and became close with them. You know, I started having people suggest to me that, hey, you ought to think about being a deacon. You know, for me initially, it was kind of a joke. I've got, at that point, six kids, I think, or seven kids. My spiritual director uh, at the time said, no, you need to discern it, and, and we did. So that brought me into applying for the diaconate. Um, I ended up having to wait for three or four years after applying so my youngest could get a little older. Uh, you know, and then I entered, and, and it was just five beautiful years of study and service and trying to understand what it means to be a deacon in the church. And uh, that led to my ordination last year, 2022 in February. So I'm still kind of a baby deacon. If you look in, in the rainy season, many of the, like there'll be no grass, it'll be all water. Like most of these areas will be just totally filled and this road will be mostly washed out. Um, and then they come through in the dry seasons and fill in as much as they can. But it pretty much will be, you know, the water's probably, you know, a foot or so above everything that you see. So my faith journey really started uh, in the beginning as a baby. I was baptized a Catholic, but my family really wasn't believers. And by the time I was an adult and got married, I uh, really was, a, a, uh, an agnostic and my wife kept praying for me so we got married uh, we were married in the church which I somehow was allowed I guess because I was baptized and she just continued to pray and pray for me and when we started having kids we we'd go to mass and because I felt even though I didn't believe that it was important that they had some exposure to a faith it really didn't have a huge effect on me or at least it didn't seem like it until it, probably at the end, there was a, a time where um, I was a big science fiction reader. It felt like it just happened to be that the books I picked up were science fiction, but where they had some concept of God and, and belief. One night, which began the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows, I was woke, just woke up in the middle of the night and I felt that there was someone there. And, and I didn't know who, I didn't quite understand it, but I felt loved, I guess, in a way I hadn't felt before and felt this call to pray, which, or an invitation, I guess is a more accurate way. He was inviting me to pray. I didn't really know how, I didn't know what it was. And I kind of knew I had a choice at that moment. And I chose to pray and ended up uh, kneeling and praying by the bed. I don't know what the prayers were or what they were about, but, but I was there till the morning and and really from there, I began this journey to, to find the truth. I felt like I was supposed to find the truth for my family. So we didn't give Lydia her time, I don't think. So what we'll do is when we get out, we'll make a plan for how we'll break up. Anybody needs to head back, just let me know. We'll head back. Well, I expect to be here 
Uh, depending on how it goes, two hours. If it, if it goes well, we may stay a little longer. All right, so it's gonna be how you guys feel, all right? So my career has been uh, really for the last 28 years as a, one of the founders of a technology company that provides technology for background screening and pre-employment screening. For us, where, where we've come to today uh, really started about 10 or 12 years ago. Um, when we entered the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, our family was discerning a call to mission at that time. We thought, hey, maybe maybe we're called to do this full time. And so we went and served as a whole family for a month in uh, South Texas. And we really felt after that, that that was what we were called to, that that was the life we were called to. However, our Lord kind of un uh, slowly unveiled, you know, what it was he really wanted from us. And so it really started when I came uh, to Belize last year, about, about a year ago. Something about that trip just spoke to me and it said, I, this is where I wanna serve and I need to figure out how to be able to do this and just give myself fully into this. And, you know, when talking to my wife, Christine at home, she didn't come, but she could see the effect on me. We still had the call together. And so she could see, okay, this is, you know, our Lord's clearly kind of pulling us in this direction. And so as we, we looked at the ways to do that, some of that was joining and participating in the team at Divine Mercy and, and helping there, serving there. But then as I, I thought about it and kind of thinking about it like if it was a business, uh, I just realized doing it small and slow would never actually get to a place where it could, could really grow needs an infrastructure, it needs somebody dedicated to it, it needs focus. You know, and praying and praying about that, how do we get that focus? You know, the answer was, well, well you just go do it. So at that point we decided, yeah, we'll uh, leave, leave the workplace. Um, we'll trust that our Lord will find a way to provide for us going forward. And as a family, uh, we're basically all in on this uh, ministry on this service. It's not quite missionary, but it's it feels like it at times. It's people like Deacon, Alexandra, and myself, Lydia. I don't know, has anybody else been door to door before? I have. You have? Oh, okay, okay. My name is Maurice Allen Howard. I'm a full-time lay member for the Society of Our Lady, and now I'm helping with the family missionary experience here in Belize. It's, as you know, a lot of work to set up and organize these trips for the laity, but um, we can thank Deacon Ken for uh, his support and help in, in getting the house ready here in, in Benke. I was involved with a little of that, but now that I come here, I see all the work that's gone into creating this experience. So I'm very happy to be uh, helping with the family mission and I hope to be involved in the future as well. 35 years ago, I spent two years here in Belize with uh, Father John McHugh in Benke. After being in a seminary for, for four years, I wanted to still serve in the, in the mission. So uh, I found Father John and spent two wonderful years there uh, being with him and traveling with him. And there's something about holiness that's very attractive. And working and living with him was very attractive. He has an attractive holiness. So that affected me the rest of my life. After I left Belize, I got married and I had a family and a career. A few years ago, uh, after my children had grown and you know, moved away from home, I sold my house in, in Michigan and decided to become a full-time missionary for the Society of Our Lady. So my heart has always been in Belize and I'm happy to be back here working on the family missionary experience. It's been a wonderful experience coming back, uh, seeing Belize City and all the changes that have happened here since 35 years ago. Uh, and also we went out to Benke and it's exciting to see everything that's happening there and makes you want to be a part of that and support all those efforts. The church has really grown there. And of course, they have the high school now. And when I was here, the high school was just a dream. It was a dream of Father John's. He wanted to help all the students that couldn't get into Mopan. There were many students at that time. I was more the practical person. I was like, oh, there's no way we can build a high school, Father John. We can't even get the support to build another building for the grade school. It's not gonna, no way. 
but he wanted me to start tutoring some children. And so I started just tutoring some kids and trying to help them to get into Mopan. And, but he had the, the greater vision. And now, of course, there's not only a high school, but the junior college as well. So it's exciting to be at the, the beginning of that dream uh, that was Father John's to expand the facilities there in, in Binke at the high school and college. We're going we're gonna to make friends. Go Mateo well. loves to make friends. So we're going to make friends here. Look, there's a dog, there's some chicken. This is so exciting. My name is Monica Rocha, and I'm from Pennsylvania originally. I live with my family now in Ave Maria, Florida. Well, I met my husband in 1997 and we're almost married 27 years. So we've been married a long time. We were both raised Catholic. He's from Bolivia, from South America. And my mother's also from Bolivia. So my father's from Pennsylvania. And when my parents got married, I was born in Pennsylvania. I grew up part of my life in Pennsylvania and part of it in Bolivia. My husband also grew up Catholic, you know, very close to the faith. So when we met, really God was, he was first in our lives, you know, which was beautiful. So in our relationship, even before us, you know, God was first. So we were married for 10 years. We didn't have any children. And we actually went on a pilgrimage to Israel. And we were in Bethlehem at the Church of the Nativity. And I remember I was there and I prayed to have children. I mean, it was February 2008. And I was pregnant like March, a month later. I really, we kind of always joke around, you know, that really our children, our children are blessings, you know, but we bought our eldest, she's 15 years old now from, uh, Bethlehem. So when Emma came around and she's 15, then my daughter, Ale our daughter Alexandra is 12, Gabriella is nine, and my son Mateo is six. So we all came uh, with the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity here to Belize to serve on our first family mission trip. And it's been absolutely wonderful. And our family, of course, God comes first. Then we love service, music, and travel. So I think our focus as a family is really having like a deep connection with God in our relationship. We all love to go to adoration. Something beautiful is just to be with Jesus. You know, we love to meditate, pray the rosary, serve others. We're really big on service because there's really like a truly a joy when you serve others you can't really describe. Kind of like Mother Teresa, St. Teresa is a big inspiration for us and all the saints, we're learning from them. Like we really want to emulate Mary, the saints, because they're the ones that are close to God. Well, coming to Belize, I, I was surprised that I didn't really realize in the mission trip, Belizeans are just beautiful people. I love their diversity and the different languages. So you're just such beautiful people. Like we're in love with this country. So I, I really want to come back. We went to Mascal, Benque Viejo, and now we're here in Belize City. So, but just the diversity everywhere is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I was born in the uh, city of Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. In my city where I, where I was born, there's only one Catholic church. That was to me um, part of my character growing up because it was a place where there's many different nationalities. Um, we knew pretty early on that we're not locals there. Like I, I went to the Catholic school there. Um, pretty much all my friends and everything revolved. All my social activities always revolved around, um, the, around the church. On my summer vacations, I would go travel to India, which is where we're originally from. Less than 2% of the population is Catholic. And so even there, we were quite well aware that, you know, we are from this huge place, but faith-wise, we're from a relatively small community. And then moving, when, when my parents immigrated to Canada, uh, that was my first experience of being in a place that was traditionally Christian. Yeah, I think like I, I actually was born in the Mid uh, Middle East as well. I was born in Kuwait and thank God we had a really, really vibrant parish. With, with lots of activities for kids and teenagers and you know I grew up in that environment um, I think when I was like 12 years old me and a few of my friends were leading the Catholic uh, summer club for the younger kids 
So I think, you know, over time, you know, I've been part of Legion of Mary. I've been, you know, part of many different things. And I think every time God has given me an opportunity to, to be part of many different, you know, aspects of our faith and, you know, learn from it and grow from it as a person. I, I like when I look back, I see like God's guiding hand through every aspect of my life at least. A couple of years ago, we made a move to Ave Maria, Florida, purposefully seeking out a more Catholic community. As the Lord would have it, we stumbled upon, I would say, Society of Our Lady of the Trinity. Neither of us really knew anything about what that was, but we decided to, you know, just move forward, uh, sometimes just take a leap of faith and begin the formation as lay members. It was also around the time that they were starting family mission experience. And in my own personal uh, past, I've always considered missions, going on mission has, uh, I don't know, it's just something that really appealed to me. When the opportunity came up, again, it was one of those aspects of, yes, you can be intentional about it, but also God providing the, the opportunities and us being willing to say yes. And so here we are, uh, you know, in Belize uh, doing our first family mission and hopefully it's the start of things to come. I think to me, I would say there's two aspects uh, for this trip. It's there's the giving aspect which is the mission but i think there's also a receiving aspect and i and i don't mean like personally receiving anything but our own personal growth like we're we're learning too and i came in with the mindset that you know i tried to have that open mindset but that maybe i'll probably leave receiving more than i've given but i think there are other aspects such as you know just being a witness i think maybe when we come to the parish here or you know mascal or wherever else we went, people seeing Catholics that are willing to travel uh, with their families and just be in union with them, praying or saying mass, singing, you know, like the word Catholic means universal. I'm hoping that us being from different parts of the world and just coming together for one purpose, to praise God, sort of really embodies the meaning of what it is to be Catholic. Yeah, it's been, it's been a great learning. I mean, anytime you visit a new place, there's learning to be had, whether you're coming with a spiritual aspect or not. And this time I'm hoping there's much more because like she said, our kids really didn't have much exposure to, you know, life uh, apart from more a North American lifestyle. I mean, we've always talked to them about it, but being on the ground and actually seeing, I think there's great learning to take from that. And I, I truly believe when we leave, we would have left you know, more knowledgeable and receiving more than we gave. The only thing we really knew that was the girls who would be singing. The woman wrapped in living light Crowned with the stars who served on earth This time around, you're like, you're just going to leave it up to the Lord. There's this, we've, we've somehow been part of these missions that have had physical components to it, but I feel like everything that we have done so far has also had a very, had a very deep spiritual component to it. And I think it was, a, it is a blessing really to be able to, you know, it, it helps give perspective and meaning to life when you're able to see things in a different light, like, you know, see, see reality. Because sometimes I think like when you live in your house and you're busy with your own life, you tend to focus less on the needs of the world, or you don't realize the needs of the world, right? Because sometimes the only way you connect with other parts of the world is like, or through social media. And sometimes that's not always accurate. We're gonna go head back for lunch and stuff. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we started to do this, it, it was really a, an, an enormous effort that I don't think uh, any of us understood. I certainly didn't. 
Um, I might have been scared off if I did. I just felt the call and felt that this is what God wanted from us and how Our Lady was kind of pulling us toward her son. And so uh, my wife Christine and I, uh, along with the, the lay leadership in Seoul, we just kind of started running forward and we just figured that our Lord would figure it out for us. Enough of them fell into place that we had this first trip, and this first trip is now wrapping up. It's uh, about 10 days, two families, six people in each family. Um, so there's really 13, 14 of us uh, running over large parts of the country. We've, we've done a lot of driving, and it's just an exciting time. I mean, it's just it's so amazing to see the difference in the families from the beginning to the end. And not, not to say that we've totally, completely changed them, but to see the looks on their faces when they got off the airport or got off the airplane and came out of the airport, and then to now, and to see how they've engaged in, in so many beautiful ways with the people of, of Belize. They've had this great focus on the relationships, on getting to know people, and trying to spend the time with them, which seems to be a, a natural trait of everybody here in Belize. Uh, and so they've, they've really done that well in the midst of, of trying to serve. It's just been a, a, a beautiful experience, and it's just so exciting to be, you know, while sad in a way to be at the end of this one, it's exciting to be finishing it and getting so many things set up and, and ready for the next one. So. So we can do this all over again in a month and, and hopefully soon thereafter and just, just keep doing it. Uh, it Lydia, uh, I forgot you guys, so we're just taking a roundabout way there. Is that all right? There's definitely a longer term plan, I think, and I want to be a part of that as well to support the efforts that are going here in, in Belize, having served here many years ago and never forgotten uh, Belize. So again, it's God's will be done. And uh, you know, I'm just happy to help in any way that I can. I think I'm just loving it. I just, I just love it. I think it's not enough time. I wish I could stay longer. We're here for two weeks. And once I started getting settled in, feeling happy here, getting adjusted to the heat and all that, in, in, our, in our new space, it's like, oh, we have to go, you know? So it, I think it's just the connections. We're gonna miss the people and we definitely want to come back because it's such a beautiful community. You know, obviously the people here do have a lot of difficulties, right? Like day to day, you can see the challenges that they are dealing with, right? But I think what was beautiful was that everybody had time for each other. Because sometimes, you know, in like just being in, you know, with our busy, with our work life and with our kids and everything, like we forget to smile all the time, like, you know? And it's nice that I think that's at least what I've learned. Two things I did appreciate on a lighter note. One is that time is not taken too seriously. Sometimes I feel in North America, it's like everything is, is, is like a rat race, right? And the other thing is that things, uh, a lot of businesses are closed on Sunday. That, I mean, is something I can really appreciate because I think as, as Catholics, as Christians, we, we really should be doing that. And I feel Belize still retains some of that, um, which is neat to see. So this apostolate, Salt Family Mission Experience, is a brand new thing in Salt. It appears to be a new thing in the church. We aren't really finding anybody who's doing the same thing the same way. It's really the only way we were able to do it uh, was with this great partnership with uh, Father Scott uh, Giuliani here at Divine Mercy. He's just been incredible to work with. He's uh, completely on board. He's, he's involved in almost everything we're doing. And it's made it, you know, I'm gonna say easy, not that it was actually easy, but it is way easier than it would have been. What we do see happening is expanding it to other salt missions in other places. So for example, Cologne, Mexico, will be probably the next one, um, probably before the end of this year. That's the, the plan. And, and then you start looking at some of the, the other ones in the U.S. potentially as well. So as we come to the end of this first uh, full family mission experience trip, I, I really have a lot of mixed emotions. I'm sad to be leaving Belize, right? We're getting to the end. It's been a long time planning for this, to have full families here serving. So the experience has been great, but it's, it's kind of sad to leave. I think the other is, is really just this great joy that 
for whatever reason, Our Lady kind of led us this way and led us into this, and this is the way we're being called now to serve, uh, serve our Lord. And it's great joy to be able to do it. You know, when you get to do what you're called to, it, it just energizes you, it gives you this joy, and that's that's where I am now. So right now, uh, my full-time job is Soul Family Mission Experience. Full-time working uh, to grow that, make it a stable. Uh, organization so that it continues. Um, as far as family life, I'm still going back and forth, like you said, right? So someday maybe we'll leave and just be here full time to support this. But for now, it's uh, it is my full time effort. I mean, this is what I'm doing for work. see all the effort put just so that a handful of us who don't really know what we're doing or where we're going can show up and, and have a place to sleep and so it's been just amazing so th there's no way to get around that Bel being in Belize is the nicest place I've ever I've never no matter what seems to happen everybody's willing to say hi and smile and it's just amazing For this and more feature stories, you can follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or view on Guadalupe Media channel 96 on CCV. You can also tune in on the radio in your car, home, or office at 101.9 FM. And please be sure to download the Guadalupe Media radio app from Google Play or the App Store. Our Blessed Mother, lead us to Jesus.